Analog photography is a form of capturing images on film that has been used for over a century. It involves the use of a camera that captures light onto a piece of film, which is then developed to produce a physical image. Unlike digital photography, analog photography relies on chemical reactions to produce an image. The film is coated with a light sensitive emulsion, which reacts to the light that enters the camera when the shutter is opened. The image is then developed using a series of chemical baths, which create a visible image on the film. One of the unique aspects of analog photography is the way in which it captures and reproduces colors and tones. The grain of the film and the way in which light interacts with it produce a distinctive look that cannot be replicated in digital photography. Although it may seem like an outdated technology in the age of digital cameras and smartphones, analog photography continues to be a popular choice among photographers who value its distinctive look and the unique challenges it presents. From choosing the right film and exposure settings to the precise timing and handling of the developing process, analog photography requires a level of skill and artistry that is not often found in the digital realm. Despite the challenges, many photographers find analog photography to be a deeply rewarding and satisfying experience, producing images that are both beautiful and unique. It has come to my attention that people watching my videos are interested in these cameras and analog photography. However, I do think that there are some people who might need a little bit more information when it comes to film photography, analog photos. What does that mean? What does analog mean? How does it work? So in this video today, I want to talk a little bit about that. I want to show you guys how to put a roll of film into two different types of cameras and just kind of give you a little bit of an explanation of what it means to photograph on film and how you can even use this to your advantage in 2023. Shooting with analog film requires a different approach than digital photography and it can be incredibly rewarding and such a great thing to experience as a beginner or even if you're an intermediate photographer. Um, however, there are different things that you need to pay attention to which I'd like to just talk about in this video. So obviously a analog film camera has a certain amount of photos that you can photograph. The first thing that is really important with film photography is to learn patience. One thing that a lot of people might not necessarily love is that you have to wait a little while for your images unless you develop them yourself in a dark room. But most people these days who do photograph analog, especially on like a hobby level, they tend to just take their images, take their film to a lab and get it developed. And sometimes it can take from four days up to two weeks, depending on how much the lab has going on right now. I know that the lab that I go to sometimes has a lot going on and they are sometimes lacking people. And so the film process, the development process can take up to two weeks. And so it's really also about being patient. Film photography really teaches you patience and that is something that I have been learning recently more than ever and I think film photography is one of the reasons why I have really learned patience in the last few years. Now the next thing obviously is that it costs money, it costs money to get film, it costs money to get the films developed. So obviously you want to be able to take photos that are not going to be rubbish because you do have to pay money to get the film developed in the first place. However, I do believe that it's such a beautiful medium to use to take photos, so I believe that it's always worth the money. I myself have spent a lot of money in the past on film development. Um, however, there are about it's about 99% that I have been incredibly happy with the results. It's about 1% maybe where the film turned out really horrible or I overexposed everything or every image was blurry and I was a bit upset that I had to spend money. But this is also a lesson. I have a feeling that because you're spending money, you tend to become more careful with every photograph that you take. So these are the films that I'm currently using because the market is also incredibly scarce right now when it comes to film. I very rarely find other films except these ones and these are still the most affordable ones that you can find on the internet. Unfortunately, there is also a shortage in drugstores, definitely across Berlin and definitely across uh, England. So 
I was really upset when I couldn't buy any film when I went back for Christmas. I thought I can just buy a film in the next drugstore and they didn't have any film and they only had one disposable camera left so I brought my camera all the way to England for no reason. So it's definitely a matter of if you want to shoot film you need to be prepared, you need to have some films on you. So obviously these are exactly the same. These are Kodak Gold 36 exposures with a 200 ISO. The ISO basically means how much um, light sensitivity the film has. So you want something, for example, if you want to shoot in a slightly darker scenario, you want to get already like a 400 ISO. The 200 ISO is pretty much the best one that you can get at the best price. However, there's 400 ISO and there's 800 ISO and you can also get 100 ISOs, which I haven't seen for a while, but you can. But then you have to make sure that you're shooting in daylight or you're using flash or making sure that your exposure and your aperture are correctly set on the camera. Otherwise, you're going to have really dark images. So that is something that you need to remember. The ISO, the 200 here, that's an ISO. Just Googled it. It stands for International Organization for Standardization, which I didn't know. <laughs> but it's basically um, referring to the light sensitivity of a film and on your camera, obviously, if it's digital, you can set your ISO from 50 to up to 1600. Digital cameras are amazing when it comes to light sensitivity. And the higher the ISO, obviously, the higher the grain is gonna be. Um, it's not so bad on film because we love grainy film photos, but on digital it does tend to get a little bit frustrating when you have incredibly noisy pictures when you go into high ISO situations. So I'm going to show you guys how it looks. So this is a film. I feel like I'm doing a little class on film photography and analog and just teaching you what is film, even though I don't know everything about it, but I feel like I'm a little teacher right now. So it comes in a film canister and then you take out the film and this is what a healthy film looks like. What you don't want to do is you don't want to pull this out any further than it already is because it could result in you not being able to roll the film into the camera properly. Now I'm going to show you how to put the film into the camera. Um, I'm going to do two different cameras. I'm not going to rewind them into both cameras because I don't want to have two films and two cameras at the same time. But I do want to just show you a difference between a completely manual analog camera and a automatic analog camera. So the first example would be with this camera. This is a completely manual analog camera. And this here is how you wind your film to the next photo. Whereas on this camera, you don't have that. It tells you up here how many photos you've got left. And then once you've taken a photo up here, it will just wind to the next photo. This is how you open this camera. This is where you put in the film. And then you close it like this. So you need to make sure that the film catches onto a small little knob that is attached to the roller before you close the back of the camera. And then once it is secure, then you take your first picture and then you should just be able to go to the next photo frame. Once your film is finished, then you turn the left hand lever all the way until you can hear the film is no longer rotating and it is in the canister completely. Now with a fully automatic camera, it's a lot easier. This camera was made so many years later and it's been much more modernized for your convenience. Find the little knob on the roll as well. Make sure that it catches into the hole in the film and then it should just be able to read your film. It should make a sound indicating that your film is now in there and then it should go up to number one and then you can take a photo to test and it should just go straight to the next number. That is how you load a film into a camera. Now, obviously you can see it's a lot more complicated with a 
camera where you have to wind it yourself so I really do think that this camera or any other automatic analog camera is going to really help you to get started if you're just beginning with analog photography. You saw that I took out the film and put it back in a little bit again because I just had to make it longer for the other camera and then those bits of film now we don't really know how those photos are going to turn out they're not necessarily going to be the best pictures the first like three or four so it's always a good idea to just shoot one or two test photos now one big error that can be made when you're shooting film for the first time is to take out the film before it's finished and if you do so the entire roll of film is going to be exposed to the light before it gets put into the chemicals that develop the film for a permanent image which means that you're going to lose your photos now I don't actually know how to develop film myself I did develop negatives one time a long time ago um, but I don't really know how to do an actual film so that is something that I also want to learn myself so we're all learning here so one thing that I really recommend when you're starting out using analog cameras is to just be really really safe when, you're, when your film has been finished to be 100% sure that the film is wound all the way back. Now on a automatic camera like this one, once you reach 36 images, it will go and rewind for you and then you can pretty much be safe and take out, be sure that you can take out the film. However, the first few times that I did it, I made sure that I was in a dark room somewhere, like a, I don't know, a closet or um, under the covers or something like that making sure there's no light at all just to double check and then kind of feel with your hands at the back okay is the film still out of the roll because if it is then your film's going to get ruined and if you have rewound it and everything is in the canister um, so no film strip is being shown then you know that you have a secure film which you can then take into the light and take it to get developed or develop it yourself and a little tip from me as well if you do have a camera that has one of these where you have to wind it yourself um, I just really recommend again getting the film out under the covers or in a in a wardrobe or something where it's dark um, because one time what happened was I heard it making some clicking sounds and I wasn't sure why and then I just kind of googled okay um, why is my film not rewinding and it had turned out that it had gotten loose which means that it was just turning this bit was turning but it wasn't winding the film into back into the canister so then I had to fumble around in the dark basically and figure out how to get the film into the canister and I had to very carefully slowly push the film into the canister but I did it all in the dark which means that the film was only slightly damaged and we still had some images from that film. So if you do have a camera where you have to manually rewind it, just, just be really, really careful of that, um, that you don't just open it out in the daytime <laughs> because it might get ruined. I hope that this video helped a little bit. I know that there are still many things that I could talk about and if you have any questions about analog photography, if you have any questions about cameras or loading film or anything like that, please do message me in the comments below or on Instagram and I will be sure to get back to you as soon as I possibly can. I really do believe that analog photography is such a fun medium to do so don't be scared, just go out there, shoot some film and you will not regret the results.